Hi there, this is Shion. Uh, this video is the first video of the series Cell in Focus, and this video concerns about the questions What is microscopy? We have covered transmission electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, light microscopy, various types of. Uh, the, but main uh, important basic questions is that What is microscopy? So, to answer that, we have this video What is microscopy? What is the compound microscope? What is the principle? What is the basic principle of image formations? What is the two important terms for microscopy? Magnifications and dissolution. This video will tell you what is magnifications. What is the different parameters? What is the different parts of a compound microscope? So to start with, we will say that microscope is a technique. Microscope is a technique used by some instrumentation to magnify your species so that you can see in your naked eye okay you can't see one species in your naked eye now you want to magnify it that's why you will use microscope to magnify the species of your cellular or material chemistry or anything biomaterial so it has a wide applications in bio imaging uh, cellular and cell biology and like and also material chemistry like this so I, I am going to the very intricate details that uh, microscope actually has uh, three parts, main three parts, the three main lenses okay, and the light source. That's the main basic part of a microscope. There are two more engineering that we don't have to know, but to uh, understand the microscope principle, we have to know that microscope has this type of setup. We have shown here this type of this type of setup, and you have a light source. We have indicated here light source. Light source is this one. Normally, in light microscopy, people use the laser light. Okay, and some electron microscopy they also use the electron beam instead of light. So, light microscopy to use laser light means using light and electron microscopy by using electron. And as light we are using, we are limited in the light microscopy. We are limited, means limitations of the light microscopy is the wavelength of light. You can't go below the wavelength of light. Okay, that's why resolutions come, resolution concept comes. You can go, you can't go one nanometer, two nanometer difference of two species by light microscopy. Okay. But in transmission electron microscopy or scanning electron microscopy, when you are using electron, then you can go to very uh, atomic resolutions. Okay. Electron microscopy use electron, which has a very low wavelength as compared to the light. That's why light microscopy has the limitations in resolution as compared to the electron microscopy. Okay. So to it's suffice to know that light microscopy use light by some light source. Now this light will come and go throughout a series of mirrors and come to the condenser lens. This is very important point. Condenser lens. What is the work of condenser lens? Condenser lens converts the light beam to a well-mannered focus, well-mannered focused beam. Condenser lens converts the light beam to a well-mannered focused beam. Now this focus beam will fall to the specimen. So obvious you can understand. Whenever this focus beam you have to create before falling on the specimen, this condenser lens you have to put before your specimen. So condenser lens is a lens, it has no role, it has no role to magnifications, but it is used to convert the light in a very well mannered focused beam and that has put before the specimen. Condenser lens has put before the specimen. Now you have a focused beam as you have we have shown here condenser lens by white piece and this is indicated as condenser lens now you have a specimen here you can so uh, see the specimen so on specimen your light is falling now specimen has what atoms your cell let's say you are taking a cell cell has atom atom has electron now these electrons are actually going to make interactions with the light and what type of interactions uh, uh, actually is happening it can be the fluorescence interactions and for electron microscopy it will be the electron and matter interactions okay here light matter interactions and light matter interactions main is the fluorescence and we have covered the fluorescence what is biological fluorescence how it used in the fluorescence microscopy or any light microscopy if you don't know then look at our another video on biological fluorophore so from there you have known that uh, in specimen when light is coming light matter interaction is happening and 
uh, fluorescence phenomena is going to happen and fluorescence means this specimen will absorb one particular wavelength of light and emit another particular wavelength of light so one particular wavelength of light is absorbing and it emits another particular wavelength of light which is called fluorophore fluorophore is tagged on organelle means conjugated with organelle when you are incubate your cell with that particular fluorophore and when you are giving light to that particular wavelength to that particular fluorophore so this particular wavelength is actually concerned for that particular fluorophore so this wavelength will be absorbed by this particular fluorophore and emit some another wavelength of light which is completely different from the previous one so one wavelength you are using and you are getting another wavelength which normally which normally you get greater than the previous one and that latter one is called emission wavelength previous one is called excitation wavelength so emission wavelength is always greater than the excitation wavelength that is also an advantage by using fluorophore in light microscopy so whatever uh, phenomenon is happening called fluorescence and light is emitting light is absorbing and light is emitting and that emitted light you are taking in a formations of image taking in a consideration to form an image now how this emitted light are going to be make a image okay going to make an image that's the main important portions now this light emitted light comes from the specimen actually passed through the series of lenses and a main part of this lenses are objective lens and eyepiece now these two lenses is very very important objective lens actually defines the potential of one microscope let's say you have a 1000x objective that is the highest microscope highest uh, potential you have 60x it will more higher than 40x so so magnifications or objective lens actually is very uh, uh, important parameter for one microscope okay so this emitted light first go to the objective lens and then go through series of lens and go to the eyepiece okay now this objective lens and eyepiece has the role in magnifications what is magnification let's say you have a small point you can't see in your neck tie when it will be magnified it will increase in its dimension let's say 1000 times let's say 100 times and you can th thus see in your neck tie that point okay so magnification is nothing but increasing in dimensions of your small point which is not which cannot be seen by neck eye okay which cannot be seen by neck tie so for magnification two lenses are responsible one is the eyepiece one is the objective objective lens and eyepiece are used to magnify the image condenser lens has no role to magnifications condenser lens has a role to convert the light beam to a very well mannered focused beam and objective lens here you can see objective lens and the eyepiece has role in magnification now how people represent magnification that is a important parameter for one microscope as i have written it has two sets of lenses magnifying object for magnifications or object eyepiece lens and objective lens that for magnifications or object and condenser lens is present which is used to adjust the intensity of light for magnifications of object let's say you are putting a laser laser light you are using a laser light now if you uh, open it if you open and uh, allow to fall all the light intensity on your species this species will burn because laser has very high energy this high much this much high energy your sample cannot bear that's why you need a condenser lens that's why you need a condenser lens condenser lens is used to adjust the intensity of light how much intensity of light can fall on a uh, your specimen so that it cannot make any toxicity to your specimen that is important that's a condenser lens too but condenser lens has no importance in magnifications what it has magnification uh, is done by two lenses eyepiece lens and objective lens now magnification is actually denoted by multiplications of eyepiece and objective lens because in these two case only magnification is going to happen so now multiply it then it will get the total magnification of a whole compound microscope system that's why you will be uh, you will be hard probably that this microscope has 40x uh, magnification let's say 60x magnification or 1000x magnifications so for light microscopy magnification varies from 40x to 1000x but electron microscopy magnification greater than the light microscopy so for light microscopy magnification can vary from 40x to 1000x that is important this range 40x to 1000 40x is a minimum so what does it 40x mean 40x mean objective lens is 10x magnified 
and here ips will be magnified by 4x 10 into 4 40x normally what happens objective lens is greater in magnification as compared to the eyepiece people use like that you can do the reverse one but people normally use objective lens with high magnifications as compared to the eyepiece okay now 40x means 10x magnified 10x magnification has been done by objective lens and 4x magnification has been done in eyepiece now the total magnifications of your lens of your compound microscope is 40x so I have taken an example 10x objective and 10x IPs will give a 100x objectification, 100x magnification. And this magnification 100x means what? Means you have a small image, it now after magnification has been increased to 100 times, 100 times of its initial dimension. That is called magnifications. So in magnifications you are magnifying, you are increasing your dimension to 100 times for a 100x objective. And for 40x objective, you are increasing its magnification to 40 times. Okay. That's the magnification. Thank you. So that's all for compound microscope. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, any type of questions, any type of question, just let me know in my comment box or you can also mail me. I have given my phone number, my mail in the description box. You can mail me, you can call me, any type of questions you can discuss with me. Thank you for watching and then bye-bye.